After months of challenges, delays, and technical problems, SpaceX has finally reached a major milestone. Elon Musk praised the achievement, calling it excellent work by the team. This latest flight was close to perfect for both the Super Heavy booster and the Starship upper stage, showing that many of the big issues from past missions have now been solved. So, what exactly happened during Starship's Flight 10, and how significant was this success? Let's break it down. It had been three months since the previous launch attempt, and after two launch scrubs, emotions were running high. The anticipation, the nervousness, and the hope of seeing progress all came together on this day. SpaceX delivered. This was a mission that ran with precision from start to finish, improving on almost every stage compared to earlier flights. The pre-launch process was smooth and well-organized. Key steps like loading propellant, chilling the engines, and activating the water deluge system happened exactly as planned. Importantly, there were no hold commands this time, which is a clear sign that problems like the oxygen leaks in the ground systems have been fixed. These refinements meant that the rocket was ready to launch right on time. When liftoff came, all 33 Raptor engines of the Super Heavy booster fired, producing over 7,000 tons of thrust. The rocket rose from the pad, showing that it can not only generate enormous power, but also maintain a stable climb. At 1 minute and 33 seconds into flight, one engine in the middle ring shut down. This was a setback, as it reduces thrust and shows that reliability still needs improvement. However, the booster continued on course without any major impact from this issue. Both stages passed the toughest part of the flight and moved toward stage separation. At 2 minutes and 50 seconds, the outer and middle engines shut down, and the hot staging system where the upper stage engines ignite before separation worked smoothly. This allowed Starship to separate cleanly and continue its journey. For the Super Heavy booster, the hot staging improvements allowed it to perform an active flip maneuver, using the thrust from the upper stage to help reorient itself. This move saves fuel and increases efficiency for future missions. The booster then began its boost back burn, but the earlier damaged engine did not restart. After stabilizing, the middle ring engine shut down, leaving only three engines for the return. By 4 minutes and 45 seconds, the hot staging ring was released, and the booster descended at a steeper angle than in Flight 9. As it neared the splashdown zone, 13 engines ignited for the landing burn, but the damaged engine failed again. To balance the thrust, one middle engine was left running alongside two inner engines, testing a new possible backup landing method. The booster reached the ocean, but onboard cameras cut out before impact. External footage later showed that it exploded on contact, which was expected since it was never designed to survive an ocean landing. Meanwhile, Starship's upper stage, Ship 37, began its mission. This vehicle had faced problems in earlier flights, such as vibrations in the engine section, fuel leaks, and hardware faults. None of those issues appeared this time. Seventeen minutes into the mission, the payload bay doors opened successfully, something that had failed before. Two minutes later, the payload dispenser moved into place, and at 19 minutes and 11 seconds, Starship deployed payloads in orbit for the first time in its history. Over the next six minutes, all eight simulated Starlink satellites were released one by one without any issues. The system worked so well that it looked like SpaceX had been using it for years. This marked Starship's first real step in building orbital infrastructure. The next test was to restart the engines in orbit, which is essential for refueling and deep space missions. At 34 minutes into the flight, preparations began. At 37 minutes and 51 seconds, three sea-level Raptor engines extended into position. One engine fired for three seconds, then shut down as planned. This confirmed that SpaceX can now perform controlled engine restarts in space. About 40 minutes after launch, Ship 37 began its return to Earth. Observers noticed some damage to the lower part of an aft flap, where pieces started peeling away. Re-entry heating put huge stress on this part for over 20 minutes, but the design upgrades kept the damage contained and did not threaten the overall vehicle. As the ship re-entered, burning debris and ash could be seen from the engine area. Even with visible damage, the heat shield upgrades held up well. When the ocean appeared through the clouds, 
confidence grew that the vehicle would make it to splashdown. At one hour, six minutes, and twenty seconds, Ship 37 performed its flip maneuver using its flaps, then fired three engines to slow down. It straightened into a vertical position, descended, and touched the water. Moments later, it toppled and exploded, just like the booster. This was expected, as the ship was not designed to survive a water landing. In the end, this mission was a major success. Starship managed to launch, separate, deploy payloads, restart engines in orbit, and re-enter with far better reliability than before. The only notable problems were the failed booster engine and the damaged flap, but neither stopped the mission from achieving its goals. After months of waiting, SpaceX proved that Starship is capable of delivering payloads, performing in-orbit engine burns, and surviving re-entry. Following the success of Flight 10, messages of congratulations came from across the aerospace industry. One of the most significant came from NASA's acting administrator at the time, Sean Duffy. He stated, Congratulations to SpaceX on its Starship test. Flight 10's success paves the way for the Starship human landing system that will return American astronauts to the moon on Artemis III. This is a great day for NASA and our commercial space partners. His statement highlighted the direct connection between this test and NASA's upcoming lunar mission, which will be the first crewed landing on the moon in over 50 years. Duffy's comments reinforced the confidence that both he and SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell have expressed about Starship's readiness for this critical role. Artemis III's success depends heavily on Starship, and each completed test moves that mission closer to reality. Another notable reaction came from Jared Isaacman, a billionaire entrepreneur, pilot, and close partner of SpaceX. Isaacman, who leads the Polaris program, remarked, that was energizing to watch. Congratulations to the SpaceX team on an important test flight and real progress toward an interplanetary capability the world is waiting for. His words underline Starship's purpose beyond the moon. It is designed to form the foundation for missions to Mars and further into the solar system. With Flight 10 complete, focus now turns to future missions. Hardware for upcoming flights is already prepared, and Flight 11 could launch as early as September. There is also growing speculation that SpaceX may attempt its long-anticipated two-stage catch, a maneuver that would see both stages recovered without touching down on land or water. While Starship draws global attention, the rest of the space industry continues to make significant progress. Rocket Lab, in particular, has been expanding its capabilities. On the 23rd of August, Rocket Lab launched its Electron rocket from New Zealand, delivering five satellites to a sun-synchronous orbit. The mission was notable for the secrecy surrounding its customer and payload. This was the second of two launches contracted by the same undisclosed client. Rocket Lab ended its live broadcast about 10 minutes after liftoff to keep the remainder of the mission confidential. Despite the secrecy, the launch was important. It marked Electron's 70th flight, placing it among the most frequently flown rockets in service today, behind only SpaceX's Falcon 9 in terms of active launch vehicles. Electron has become a reliable option for small satellite launches, and every successful mission strengthens Rocket Lab's position in the market. Rocket Lab's growth over the past eight years, and especially the last three, has been rapid. The August 23rd flight was its 12th launch of 2025, putting the company on track to surpass last year's record of 14 launches, with four months still left in the year. Even more impressive, every launch this year has been successful. However, gaps in the schedule, such as in January and July, highlight the need for a more consistent cadence to reach the next stage of growth. Looking forward, Rocket Lab is preparing to debut Neutron, a larger, reusable rocket designed to compete with Falcon 9 and challenge vehicles like Blue Origin's New Glenn, ULA's Vulcan, and eventually even Starship. Its first flight is still targeted for later this year, and its performance could define Rocket Lab's future role in the launch market. As SpaceX moves ahead with Starship's development and Rocket Lab pushes toward Neutron's debut, both companies are helping shape the next era of space access. Each milestone brings the industry closer to new records, more efficient launches, and deeper exploration of our solar system.